Um, I'm Steve Nara, and um, I uh, worked on a bunch of stuff at Apple. I guess back um, in the early days of Next, I was the founding member of the compiler team and made GCC work for Next and enhanced it to do Objective-C and enhanced it to do Objective-C++, which is this really crazy language we support. And um, I'll talk about some other stuff um, that I've done over the course of the talk. But, so that's who I am, and right now I'm working with Chris on an end front end. So um, this was the talk that was written about on the website. Um, I'm not here to talk about Objective-C. Most of you probably don't care about Objective-C, true? Does anyone know about Objective-C? Oh, people, right? So we're adding garbage collection for each and properties, so that's all you have to know. That's the high level story. So, uh, <laughs> we're here to talk about um, an, uh, a, new, a new implementation of a new C front end. So um, let me go through and uh, describe what we're trying to do. So as far as I'm concerned, we need a rallying cry in the Apple and LLVM communities. We need a great front end for the next decade, right? We, you know, LLVM is beautiful, and we need a front end that has the same beauty to, to go with it. Right now, GCC is not quite um, as beautiful. <laughs> um, and uh, I think Chris, is, Chris has done amazing work to uh, put his head down and make it work. But it would be nice to have something that was a little bit uh, better for uh, the future. So why? Um, as I just said, it's difficult to work with. Um, the learning curve is steep for many developers. The, the GCC inside crowd. Obviously, they're used to it, so um, they know it, and it's not that um, big a deal for a lot of those folks. And when I was 27 and doing the work I just said I did, it wasn't a big deal for me either. Um, but I'm a lot older now, and I can't bear to work in that environment anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to me, it was either retire or work with Chris. And I chose working with Chris over retiring for now. So, um, um, the implementation and politics limit innovation, to me, it's a little bit sad. You know, GCC pioneered the open source revolution. And um, unfortunately, I think it's, it's in fact a problem now. With, with the, uh, to me, open source is about opening up ideas, teaching people new idioms, patterns, having people who aren't necessarily compiler experts get to work on compilers, right? And, 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 that's, and like you said, mere mortals, and I'm going to use that term later on in the talk, we want that property to, be, property to be true for the front end as well. So anyway, a, a good example of politics I'll give you, because you're probably thinking, what, what is politics? Well, there's lots of examples, but I'll give you one. Um, in um, the early 90s, um, Next had some real big problems with compile time, even though we had done the native um, compiler. And that's because Next pioneers, Next pioneered <coughs> large libraries, right? Uh, at that time, the C library was small. C++ didn't have a library at the time. And um, we were having real big problems with compile time. So I went to Richard Stallman, and I said, we really need pre-compiled headers. You know, a lot of other compilers, like Borland and others, have pre-compiled headers. Can, can we do that um, to um, GCC? And he said, no, I don't want to do pre-compiled headers. So there's an example of politics at the time. Richard was the lead. Um, and as prolific as Richard is, he didn't want to do pre-compiled headers. So um, we had to make our own plans for solving that problem again. Um, and the solution was to implement something called DevKit. So I and another very talented intern at Apple um, worked on something called DevKit that is still in use today. And um, it filled the void that GCC um, was creating for us. Um, so the very first job was to have DevKit implement pre-compiled headers, which we did. And that scheme um, lasted about a decade. And then Jeff Keating, who's in the room today, who works on GCC, fortunately implemented a scheme in GCC. But that was 12 years after I asked Richard for it. right? And for a company like Next and Apple that's very aggressive, 12 years is too long to wait to make the compiler faster. So, um, so DevKit's still in use today. Um, and um, we needed to, to serve our IDE. Again, the open source community is about mostly about command line. It's about um, ubiquity. There is, uh, other than, I think, uh, our IDE, there probably isn't any great IDE for GCC. So we care more about that. 
uh, than uh, other vendors who are working in the open source community. So the big problem with this approach is you have two preprocessors, two parsers, uh, two lexers, and so developers get different answers. Sometimes when they're in the IDE, their code doesn't index properly and they can't understand why. GCC is compiling it. Why doesn't it index properly? So it's very confusing to them and it's a maintenance nightmare to us. Okay, so, so we, we lived with this because we had to live with it um, 15, 20 years ago. And my hope at the time was um, that DevKit or its approach would be, let's say, adopted by GC, GCC over time. That the GCC community would understand the benefits of using C++ abstraction and reusable libraries and so on. Well, that didn't happen, right? So that didn't happen. So my only other hope at the time was that um, Next or now Apple would finance a back end that could, that could go with DevKit. Well, that too didn't happen, okay? So the third option, which I never considered, happened. Chris and LLVM, um, was happening, we noticed it, and we said, wow, this, this would be a great opportunity to actually achieve our goals. So that was one of the um, virtues we saw in, in LLVM early on. Yes? So why, why didn't you use the GCC for indexing? Why did you use two different tools, one for indexing and one for compiling? GCC was too heavy. Um, number one, it was too heavy. Number um, two, it's very important in an IDE the code be indexable without, it, without being correct. So it needs to, um, DevKit is fuzzy. Okay, and I'm going to talk a little bit of uh, work. This this toolkit and framework we're working on is also supports fuzziness. That's great. Okay. Uh, so what are our goals? A unified parser for C-based languages. So our, our our big thing is language conformance for the three languages I've outlined there. I haven't listed Objective C++. That's assumed. Um, I should have included it. GCC compatibility. All the code at Apple currently compiles with GCC. Moving from uh, MetroWorks to GCC, I lived through that, and I know how hard that was. And I know, and I don't trivialize that compatibility uh, fully. But nevertheless, it has to be a goal of ours. And um, expressive diagnostics. So, and just to be clear, what I mean by unified. Currently, GCC, even though it supports four different dialects of C, all of them are actually in different executables. Okay, so we have an executable that's you know five megabytes for um, each language. The place that fights us is with precompiled headers. The data structures are different for each um, processor and for each language. So there's a combinatorial explosion of precompiled headers we have to generate when anything changes in a, in a header. Okay. And I don't have to get into the details here, but it's a problem. Library-based architecture. Um, this is basically a, the, the front-end equivalent to what LLVM is. We want it to be usable and extensible by mere mortals. And let me give a definition of what I mean by mere mortal. I mean that um, you're not a compiler expert, but you have programmed in C or C++, and you're knowledgeable about a domain, let's say source code refactor or let's say static analysis, um, that you will be able to use this without feeling like you need to know a lot about parsers or about lexers or about preprocessors, right? So there are an awful lot of people out there who want to write tools who, when they're confronted with GCC, are just too intimidated and cannot deal with it. So that's what I mean there. Um, it needs to be multi-purpose. It needs to support anything you can imagine wanting to do with a front end, okay? Um, it needs to be multi-instance, right? If I'm in an IDE and I want to instantiate a parser and parse a message expression, um, I should be able to do that. You shouldn't have to parse modules or even functions. You should be able to parse expressions. So fine-grained, multi-instance, so on and so forth. Um, so 